So basically, we will be using the um, SQL interface in here. We will try to dig deeper in the, on, on those events to try to understand the type of alert and how can we distinguish or identify whether the alert is false positive or true negative. So basically, guys, as a typical security operational analyst or as you work in an environment where your job role is network engineering or network analysis, definitely you will be dealing with those type of alerts. It might be on Snow RDS, it might be on other IPS product like um, Cisco SA firewall or other SIEM devices that are based on generating those alerts. So basically guys, um, here is the main interface in here and you can see this section is for displaying the alerts, the section for displaying um, the rule that triggers the alert and the packet data which, which is down there. Here is more information about DNS, external DNS resolution and statistics or system messages. So you'll get started in here. We got, for example, this alert is triggered by the rule down there, which tells us that there is an external connection from uh, 172.16.1.10 to our internal client IP address. By the way, guys, I forgot to tell you about our network topology, which is in place in here. You can see we got uh, we have two PCs or clients uh, interested in this uh, tutorial. We got only Mark PC, which is typical Windows PC client, and has the IP address 10.10.6.11. 10, and we got our DMZ server, which has the IP address 172.16.1.10. So what, what we see in here are communications between our DMD server and our Windows PC client. So for our topology here, the DMD server is considered as external IP address. All right, and the Windows PC client is within our internal network. So this alert is telling us there is a communication over the protocol remote. RDP, remote disk to RDP on port 3389. <clears throat> so, to understand whether this alert is worth investigating or it's just false positive, we have to view what are the events, what are the correlated events that are closely related to this event. So, by right clicking on CNC and clicking on view correlated events, we will be presented with those alerts or that are closely related. We can see that we have three uh, attempts to connect to Windows PC clients using RDB protocol and on port 3398. Uh, sorry, 8.9. <laughs> so guys, the rule is telling us there is a possible those attempts all right so in every alert in here we see that there is a possible those attempt on this client so to investigate more we will get back in here right click our alert id and let's see the pcap packet of this alert click on wireshark In here, we can see that, um, click on this, there is synchronization. Okay, it might get, or oh, get stuck a lot. This is so basically daunting, guys. Why it doesn't respond? Okay, let me close it. Okay. I'm gonna reopen it again. Okay, here we go. So, so here, as we can see, 
uh, there is synchronization request or handshake from the DMZ server to this client which is acknowledged communication uh, there is nothing worth noting in here so there is something suspicious in here guys as to why our internal client PC is allowing connections from external hosts typically in any network environment even in your desktop PC or uh, Windows PC your firewall doesn't allow external connections from outside your network uh, unless those connections are part of typical handshake TCP handshake or HTTP request or response otherwise this connection is not allowed to traverse to your internal client so here we have to investigate more to see whether this uh, connection is false positive or some part of big conspiracy that this uh, our client PC might be used as proxy server to relay communications from an infected AMD server to other external machine let's dig more to see what other uh, indication of compromise we might see that are related to this event or alert? Okay, we, we, I have here police, uh, a file that has been downloaded from my PC client from this machine to see whether this file is malicious or not. We will click right click on it at the end, clicking on network miner. Okay, here. We will see the files that have been downloaded by our internal PC client. We are interested in see and analyze those files whether they are malicious or not. So basically, we will fire on uh, our browser. Okay. And going to virus total. So I'm going to drag and drop the file. Open folder. So dragging and dropping the file. Um, we got only three flags or marks from three antivirus services as you can see in here flagging the file as somewhat malicious you can see malicious confidence 70 percent other antivirus services have flagged this file as clean so you will consider this as false positive it might be i mean it might be like obfuscated file or uh, well co encoded virus virus or worm or uh, malware unless you see any other indication of compromise from this file through your network or through your IDS you can't tell that this file is really malicious or well obfuscated so we will skip this and going to other alerts um, so this or this going back to SQL I might I might push it out of this Okay, and we are back here. There is something worth our attention. There is scan nmap OS detection probe. There is someone is scanning our network from this IP address. So basically, our DMG server is trying to scan our. PC clients, which is Windows PC, to see which services are running, which services are vulnerable, in order for the in order for in order for the exploitation to take place by this IP address. So we will see how this how does it look like by clicking on Wireshark um, transcript. Um. Okay. So no, click on Choro. Snob. Okay, as you can see, someone is scanning our network in here, trying to detect what OS we are running on this client, and then we see 
rule um, I learned that's triggered by rule that it is an extended connection from this client to this trying to exploit a vulnerability in Internet Explorer so my so my our client PC uh, might have visited a web page via Internet Explorer and got exploited by this IP address or this uh, attacking machine so basically imagine that someone has uh, sent uh, some sort of URL to one of your employees via email or via social engineering tactics and your employee uh, has clicked on the URL okay and got exploited as of a vulnerability that might be existed on his uh, browser so we can see this scenario is typically close to this scenario in here so basically we got an exploit that's uh, on this client but how this exploit has been delivered we will dig down to see how this client has been exploited we will click right click on IOT ID and clicking on transcript okay here we can see the full uh, transaction between those two IP addresses we can see that the destination IP address which is our client PC browsed to um, uh, HTTP web page and the response was not found then our client PC as you can see has requested this web page okay and the DMD server has responded with the response code 200 okay which means that our client may or sorry the initial exploitation vector is this web page okay which has been visited by our client machine or internal client machine which is Windows PC uh, to request uh, I mean some sort of re resource from this server which is 1.0.0. so when you are presented with this you know, will be will be escalating this issue to tier 2 analysts or for further investigation to flag this as an incident and begin the instant response process and get into the contamination and eradication phase which will typically be um, uh, trying to contain uh, isolate this uh, clients from the network and try to clean or wipe wipe it clean every trace or of the exploit okay guys so basically this is I mean an overview of how you can use SQL to try to detect any malicious event on your network and to get familiar with any in identifying false positive or throwing a dip in your network and try to how uh, uh, escalate those issues and when to escalate those issues to uh, for further investigation and flagging the alert as an incident or leaving it alone as false positive thank you guys hope you find this tutorial helpful and see you